So this is a short video just to explain how to use the embedded content processor in Studio 2014. So I have an XML file here which I'm going to open in a text editor and the information which we can quickly take from here is the root element activity uh, maybe the name name element looks like it contains translatable text health systems and overview as I scroll down through the file quickly okay there's a title element what is the health system looks like translatable text a contents element this one looks like it contains embedded content so these entities here these are actually um, this is actually HTML code and I want to process these using the HTML processor as opposed to creating regular expression rules for this if I scroll down a bit further it doesn't look like there's much more it's a repeat of the same so title contents here's, oh, here we go is more so we've got some list items again this is so this is all HTML within the contents element but there is no C data so the idea here is that we're going to define the contents element by providing it with some document structure so we're going to set some structure in the file type against the contents element and that structure is what we will use to tell the embedded processor what to process that's the principle so if I come to studio I'm going to say file options file types which I'm in and click on new I'm going to create an XML embedded content file type there's two types of embedded content processors here there's the legacy embedded content this one which allows you to create specific regular expression rules to handle the way the embedded content is processed if I use this top one this is the new one and this allows me to process the embedded content with another file type so for example with the HTML processor so this saves me having to create any rules that's the one I'm going to use I click on OK I'm going to give the name of the file type Jose because Jose gave me the XML file and ask the question so that's it I've also given I also filled in the file type identifier this is because when I open the file in studio when I'm working in tag ID mode it tells me which file type I actually used by um, by displaying the file type identifier so then I can be sure I've used the right one it's just a bit of a sanity check so I could either create it from scratch based on the default settings and in fact I know what elements and things I need to take out of that file so I I, I, I'm going to do that or I could just import the XML file but I'm just going to do it quickly with this because I think it might be quicker um, I'll add the rules later the root element to help me help me um, identify the file is activity that was in that came from the file type I'm going to click on OK and I'm just going to finish there so that's my file type created all I need to do now is add my rules so first of all I'm going to add I'm just going to use XPath for this, so I'm going to add a rule which is forward slash forward slash star. That just means select everything but make it non non translatable. So that's telling me don't pull anything out of the file at all. So no mistakes here. And now I'm only going to say pull out of the file what I want. And what I want, if I go back into XPath again, is I want the name element that was the first one always translatable there was no embedded content in that one as far as I can see so I'll just add it like that I'll add a new one this time I'll add the title like that and this was always translatable as well and then I'm going to add the contents element now the contents element is the one that contained the embedded content so here I'm still going to make it always translatable but I'm going to apply some structure information to that so to do that in this box down here I click on edit then add and this allows me to add some structure to this particular element I could create a custom rule for that but the easiest thing to do particularly in a file like this is I'm just going to create one I'll call it paragraph say OK and then OK and finally you can see now in the structure info I have the paragraph element there paragraph structure there and when I've come out of that here's my rules I only have four rules for the whole file nice and simple and the context is against the contents element paragraph now the next step is to move to the embedded content processor and here first of all I need to enable it 
and I do that by clicking this button process embedded content using the following processor and I then need to change the type to be whichever file type I want to process it with and in this case I want to process it using the HTML embedded content 5. Now there is no C data but there is some document structure now because I've just applied some document structure to one of those elements so now I can click on add pick the same one that I want to use which was paragraph that's what I used and say OK so there we go so I've now applied that I've now said everywhere where you find this document structure apply the embedded content processor and if I look back at the parser rules I have one element which is the contents element and the contents element contained all of that that, that embedded content so I click on OK and if I now translate single document pick up the lesson XML and open it what that gives me hopefully is a couple of things first of all you can immediately see all these tags um, and the tags are there telling me that all that embedded content has been nicely prepared and protected using the HTML filter which is good you can tell it's the HTML filter because I've actually got over here list items it's an unordered list you would only know this if the HTML file was applied because it recognizes what those symbols are um, and I've got the paragraph elements for anything that is got nothing else in there to tell it other than it's just a paragraph as defined by me and that's it maybe one other little thing Jose Jose at the top this is not the file name the file name was lesson.xml this is the file identifier and the reason I see that is because I'm working in tag ID mode which you can tell because I have numbers against the tags if I was to click on view I can change it and if I do that you see that if I use this one it disappears down to nothing and tells me nothing if I use the next one it tells me the file type if I use the next one it tells me the full path to the file and if I use the tag ID it tells me which file type has been used based on the file type identifier so just a handy check particularly if you handle a lot of XML files to help you help you ensure you're using the right one anyway that's how you use the embedded content processor for an XML file where, you, where there is no C data within the file